2015 Hearthstone Grand Prix. I will be your host for this round, Nimsh. And I'm joined here by Lofar, as always, and Defalor, the newcomer, our uh, pro player hey from Greece. So, guys, how are you doing? And uh, Defalor specifically, casting well, here. I'm pretty us. happy. Uh, well, I got disqualified, like, in the last round. Disqualified? For yeah. what? Yeah, I lost two games in a row. Oh, okay, so it's not a, it was not a disqualification. No, 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 just <laughs> I'm out of the top eight. Yeah. Well, you know, it happens in the Swiss tournament. Uh, it happens in every, every single tournament, but not, not at least you cast here with us. Yeah, that's fine too. And uh, you will be our specialist because we are going to have Hokai versus Kaldi. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us more about Hokai? He is, uh, he's not your teammate or is he your teammate? Uh, no, he's not my teammate. But you share the country. Uh, yeah, we share a country and uh, we have a lot of things in common. Like what? Like what? Uh, we both play things uh, like better. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I think we're, consi we're considered like the top players in Greece by like Kay. most people in the community. Um, who else is known from Greece? All right, so best uh, players in Greece. But let's uh, look at the standings right now. Those guys, uh, let's see what, the, what is the score. So Kaldi and Hokai both are 5-0. And uh, this is round six. So whoever wins is actually through. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Whoever wins this match will be tr through to the top eight, so this is a very important match, and uh, I hope no the players will not be nervous doing it, because, you know, that's a really high-stakes game. It's yeah. even more important than the first stage of top eight. That's definitely true. We had 128 players, and now reduced only to the top eight. Those two guys facing each other, and a great, uh, what great players. So, Defloor, tell us more about... Uh, well, actually, like, uh, while we were looking at the standings, are you guys surprised? I've seen most of those names already, and many, many lists before. I'm not true. surprised at all. Like, I know Pokai personally, and he's a strong player, but Tiddler, Ostkaka are very good players. Hal Kaldi, too. Like, probably, like, they're not, like, the most known players, but if you ask guys who is, like, Ostkaka is the answer of a lot of pros, who is the best player, who is not that known. And, yeah, Tiddler is a powerhouse as well. Yeah, yeah. obviously we have a couple of matches running right now, so that, mm -hmm. that's why the score is uh, that some people have more points than others, mm -hmm. but they are going through it. Uh, Lofar, would you like to add anything about the standings? Uh, not really, I'm not surprised at all. And uh, as, as I said two rounds before, I was looking forward to Tiddler, Tiddler to perform well, and he's actually 5-0. So I'm really curious if he will go on a perfect score, because one that's... Um, one of the horses I would bet on, apart from Thais, of course, and I really wonder how Thais will be doing also after this round. All right. So the match is starting right now. Kaldi versus Hawkeye. The winner advances to the top eight. Uh, he will still have to play uh, one more game, but a 6 1 score uh, is it. So Hunter versus Druid. I think Kaldi got the matchup he wanted. It's a matchup which favors the Hunter, and I guess it's a hybrid Hunter. We see Savannah High Main. Some early drops. I suppose he's running freezing traps. I haven't seen his decks, but mm -hmm. and those are super strong against Druid. Most in this way, in most situations, apart from uh, the scenario when there's turn six for force of nature, mm -hmm. right? Because then, then the f uh, freezing trap is kind of like a liability to the whole game plan for Hunter. Kaldi is actually playing the same lineup as he did last time at DreamHack Summer. Kaldi qualified through the open bracket. And right now, with a perfect score of 5-0, playing same classes. It's, it's amazing that he, bring, he brings the same classes again. Play what you love, and you, and you win. Yeah, that, that kind of fits. Like, um, most players are specializing in at least one class, and they always bring it. So, no wonder. There is a Wolf Rider, so it's a really hybrid hunter, because um, no, that, 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 that um, trend happened, actually started recently, to add the... Uh, Arcan Golems or Wolf Riders to attack with seven high mains. So and usually it was kind of a two different archetypes. Now we did see that combined together to make a new kind of swingy uh, hunter, which can both beat both um, mid range decks and control decks at the same time. Yeah, a very good archetype where you basically normal hunter face hunter runs out of steam. Hybrid hunter has a high main at the moment, so mm -hmm. you never run mm -hmm. out of steam. You basically mm -hmm. follow up with hun uh, with high main after you. You go face for most of the time. But look at that hand. Two innervates. You really dislike the card, right? Oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I just think the same happened uh, in um, Magic, like in the early days. There were cards that were bending the, the fundamental rule of the game, which is mana, uh, mana system. And innervate just breaks that rule because you can 
just play something that is that is, that doesn't belong and uh, at the game like let's say let's turn two drizzle claw a town minion with four six sets kind of overpowered right so you pay you don't pay that high high price when it comes to risk with the innervate and you you just go ahead and snowball from that from that position of course there's some some at some point might be some blowbacks but um you know, most of the time it's just super, super efficient. Deflor, do you agree with that? Yeah, and now we see the snap kill command to kill the Druid of the Claw. Uh, Kaldi was pretty lucky to have the answer. Uh, I think he would be screwed since he has no freezing trap, which is, in my opinion, the most important kind of mm -hmm. card of this mm -hmm. matchup. Followed by High Main, which is in his hand, fortunately for him. So it's going to be a tough match. So uh, who has an edge for now? And uh, normally who is stronger in this matchup? Uh, normally, this matchup favors uh, the hunter, and right now uh, it's kind of hard to evaluate. I think I think the hunter is ahead since he has the high man on six, but uh, yeah, that's a bad draw as well. The second force, but I guess Sylvanas can turn the game around. Played after the high man, mm -hmm. so you can actually yeah. trade. That's a good point. But sometimes you don't want to be played first. An example of there's a Pilot Shredder on board because you want to steal the Pilot Shredder, yep. right? Yep. In those cases, yeah. So can you use this opportunity also to tell us more about Hawkeye? He was in the final of Euro versus China. Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, worth a note? Yep. Uh, apart from that, he recently qualified for the Vulcan League, uh, which is going to be pretty soon. Uh, he's doing really well lately, actually. Infinity, yeah, he also qualified with the Infinity, and I'm also qualified, so we're going to see him in one month from now. Nice. No, that's that's yeah. really nice. He's really... Yep, please continue. Yeah, he's really tough. At, he's really good at online qualifiers. Um. We'll see how it does, how it does, uh, how it goes with this tournament because now that's the really important match for him. Even if he loses here and wins the next match, he will go through. But obviously, you don't want to lose. You want to go through right now, to not get anything, not give anything to chance. Yeah, and not be nervous at all. Yeah. Mostly for the psychology factor, because like the players who, are, who lose this match, they will go with, you know, it's like, like bad, bad tempo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the morale will be down, that's for sure. Yeah, and right now we see the Hyman on six. Just played it green. Yeah, it's kind of like a, the old Doctor Boom, right? You play it on six. <laughs> that's yeah. definitely true, and there is nothing to contest it anyway, so you are safe to play it there. And that's a snap, Sylvanas by Hawkeye. Definitely. Then you trade for the Lepernome. Because you don't want to... Well, maybe not. Maybe you would like to get the Lepernome instead of one of the Hyenas. Yeah, true. That's a good point. But then Lepernome presents more damage. Because it will go face and it still deals 2 damage with the Death Rattle and you are pretty low, 19. And after a Savannah Hymen attack, it will be at 13. Lepernome show P. <laughs> yeah. It is. It, that's why I like the card. Always to damage. Whatever happens. Consistent. So now you just push for damage here, right? You go six damage to the face of the Savannah, put him on 13. You can play Lepernome, Pile to Shredder, and Hero Power, ability. but that leaves your. And that's, that's also the case. Now, the, exactly the scenario I pointed out. The, um, the, the, the Savannah, when killed by uh, Sylvanas, will spawn the hyenas before the effect of the Sylvanas will be, will be made, so the chances of stealing the Pulse Shadow are, are not that high. So, so can you, Defalor, can you take us through that play? Why did he attack into Savannah high main? Yeah, uh, right now he just wants to, like, reduce the damage on board. And because, like, he realizes he can just win with the board, his opponent's hand tends to be a bit weak, so right now the Hunter can just apply more pressure. But I don't really agree with Kaldi's play. I would probably go for a more ap aggressive approach. Yeah, I agree here. The, the, the face damage is more important in this matchup than anything else. Because you will lose the board, board war against um, Hawkeye's Druid here at mm -hmm. some point because of the Sylvanas. And uh, the force of nature here, as we see, is really crucial to trade for the, for the initial board state. And then we'll see the drop from the Pathless Shadow, which can be killed also. Yeah, on the, on the other hand, he, he actually robbed Hawkeye from the possibility to trade with Sylvanas as he likes mm -hmm. and maybe stealing the high main if there will be a simple wrath. But his hunt represents very little damage. Like Exactly. The threats are not... Uh, the Wolf Rider and the single Lepernome are not that big of a threat, you know? So the single hit from Sylvanas was m worth more than his hand or board state. 
Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with going for face. Just wanted to explain why you could uh, trade with Sylvanas on your own terms uh, to try to deal with it. By the way, I like the placement of Pilot of Shredder here. If <laughs> yeah, no misplay there. Yeah, definitely no misplay. There and now he has to get luck now. And one uh, four. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, that's Hawkeye. not bad, yeah. It's not that aggressive, but you probably want to deal the damage anyway. Overheal. <laughs> Mad Scientist can provide him with that freezing trap that he was looking for, but it's not presenting that much damage at, the, at this moment. The second uh, force in Hawkeye's hand can negate the freezing trap, mm -hmm. which is That's really important. He can like, attack with the first treant to the Wolf Rider, then with the second treant to the Mad Scientist, uh, and third treant will just pop the freezing trap back, so you can use your uh, Druid of the Claw. Wait, does it make any sense? I don't think so. With the Keeper, silence well, the Mad Scientist. You can still use your heal power, so you can pop everything and just leave him top decking. Yeah. Right now you can't uh, use your keeper because that leaves you with four mana and you definitely want to play the taunt. You either play force or the taunt right here. I guess the force of nature is not a bad choice here. We've paired up with the hero power. Because otherwise you're just mm -hmm. left with druid, he uh, druid and, um, and shade, right? Mm -hmm. It might push for more damage in the long term because the shade will grow and uh, attack faster because then you will attack with it from the next turn, right? Yeah, I would rather see the force here because you can just uh, rid of the claw and keep her next turn on curve. But then if you play the force, how do you kill your opponents? He will steadily uh, draw damage cards and you use double force. Yeah. So you will not be able to force uh, Savage Roar. Yeah, okay, actually you can either draw Savage Roar and Lore. In the case you actually draw Lore, this plays better. If you draw Savage Roar, the other plays better. So it's just depending on what you draw in following turns. <laughs> Alright, he was able to deal with the freezing trap really well here. So now he will kill the leper gnome, so yep. perfect clear and uh, even the weapon is not as powerful uh, as it should be with the freezing trap out. And now Kaldin, it's a quick shot. Savannah quick Highmane? Quick shot or Savannah Highmane, that's Absolutely it. Absolutely, like, or quick shot into Savannah Highmane. Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> quick shot into Savannah would be OP. <laughs> <laughs> I do it sometimes. Glaive Zuka is pushing for damage. But that might be not enough, because this turn it will be a Druid with the Claw into Shade of Nextramus. Oh, the Belcher. Well, you can play the Belcher and the Shade. That's, uh, that's huge. But maybe Druid of the Claw first? Yep. Why not? I, I think Druid of the Claw should be second, because it has, it has the option to charge. Uh, yeah, that's true, but uh, I think he prefers Druid, because like those four damage will eventually uh, out be important in the race. Like, one damage per turn can matter. But you can use the charge, like, next turn. So if you play, like, in this case, mm -hmm. Belcher is minus three damage because it lacks the one attack, yeah, that's right? True. That's true. So if you would play the Belcher, there's, like, no, no difference between Silence now because you only have one taunt, right? But right now she can just Belcher plus Trent plus uh, her ability. Mm, uh, well. Maybe he just wants to go for both taunts since if his opponent finds an owl... Uh, is weak to chargers, but I, I can see your point. But even if there is an owl, it's better to owl the 4-6 uh, and then play Belcher, mm -hmm. then play Belcher, get an owl, and then yeah. Druid of the Claw. No, I just think that the Druid of the Claw with the option to charge is more important than the, the race because it puts 8 damage in 2 turns and not 4 damage or 6 I damage. Actu like I actually it. agree there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially with that kind of hand. Like, look at that. We, I didn't know that he plays Ancient of War. Playing the Druid of the Claw in Town Pop makes almost no sense here. Gara just got eliminated, guys. AKA oh. Wonder defeated Gara. Wow. Uh, those are the two guys that beat me. <laughs> That's pretty funny, I guess. They had, they had to meet at some point. Yeah. We all three faced each other. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, not what he w was looking for, I guess. Yeah, but he's still in a, in a good top deck shape, let's say, because after shapeshift, that's five points of health. So a simple kill command or quick or a shot. Or quick shot, yeah. Uh, 8, 10, yeah, okay. Uproot or Riot? <laughs> <laughs> I think he still has lethal, even if he doesn't know Yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So always, Chad will be spamming that, <laughs> sure. But if, if he was like, uh, if the Hunter had more HP, he should Uproot to set lethal. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a play, like. Is there any reason here to not play a minion to play around uh, second Unleash, of ha uh, Unleash the Hounds? No, no, no. Yeah, because That's like if you taunt, difference. if you taunt. If he turns up, there's no difference you know, between the Unleash the Hounds for 4 Hounds or for yeah. 10 Hounds. But if he will go for Uproot, 
and Shade of Extramas, then he's dead to hounds. Yeah. yeah, he has three outs, right? Uh, or, yeah, two quick shots, one kill command. Yeah, because he has one really early. Yep, let's see. An esports moment. Second Lezuko, well, that's definitely not what he was looking for. And that's game. Yep, that's game. So, right. first game games goes to Hawkeye. Wow. Druid versus Hunter, where Druid is at a disadvantage originally with those uh, those builds, but Kaldi never you know, never got that uh, freezing trap. Mm -hmm. And also, with uh, with high main, he made the decision to attack Nata Sylvanas. That might have cost him, hit, cost him the game. Yeah, and double force of nature really carrying, uh, carrying uh, Hawkeye in this match. All right. Vital, I think. So, Hawkeye, 1-0. Uh, he still has Shaman and a Warlock. We have we seen wow. Shaman? Forsen was playing Shaman. Forsen was playing Shaman, the Mech Shaman uh, but iteration. Uh, but Hawkeye is not playing a Mech Shaman, spoiler alert. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so the normal Shaman for the first time. <laughs> normal Shaman. Actually, it's an Egg Shaman. <laughs> now we see the Egg here. Yep. We okay, see egg. so this is not normal. Midrange, though. Well, Colento was playing Egg Shaman uh, during the DreamHack Stockholm, right? That was so long ago. That was the qualification for World Championship. Yeah. And uh, if I remember correctly, um, Colento was playing X in the Shaman. I have to say that Hawkeye is a Shaman specialist, and even Gara himself said, uh, you're the best Shaman. Like, he brought it to Europe versus China, won every single match with it. So, yeah, he's, he's known as a very good Shaman player. It's actually his favorite class. Oh man, if Gara best know. shaman says that Hawkeye is best shaman... <laughs> man, says something is fishy here. <laughs> yeah, you can ask him uh, to confirm that later on. Well, he's on a good way to have an, a winner's interview. Uh, I'm definitely excited to see the shaman game. His opening seems to be pretty good as well with the mana titanium, that egg and uh, some buffs. And actually, uh, an important information. Uh, Purple Drunk, in, in the match between Kaldi and Purple Drunk, Kaldi uh, went all in on his Funk Leaf against the Freeze Mage mm -hmm. and won the game. So, uh, Hawkeye, knowing that, keeps the Hex in the Mulligan. I don't really agree with that, but it's something to consider. That's the reason he kept it, because he knows his opponent has a Funk Leaf. And he okay. actually has Funk Leaf in his hand right now as well. Yep. He's going to go for, like, a turn for Deadly Poison, Backstab, and Edwin Van Clare. Yep but decides to use it right now, and I think this is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 4-4 four, four minion that will get eaten by an Earthshock or Hex doesn't really need to be bigger. And you make a tempo play, you have a Shredder for 4, so yep. he's in a good shape. We hyped Shaman so much, but this is actually a bad matchup for Shaman. That's one of the worst, probably the worst matchup for Shaman. Well, he, d he does have a decent start here. I have to say that Hawkeye will have some trouble getting a win with his Shaman, but maybe he will find it right now because that's a very, very good uh, opener. Lothar, don't cry, yeah, but Pius is uh, out. Too bad. Oh, I'm sad as well. There's Violet Teacher. Deathlord, what do you think about Violet Teachers in those decks? Uh, Violet Teacher is pretty clunky against Patron and uh, not so good against Handlock. I'd rather have Shredder against it. So it really depends on the expected meta. Uh, when I was expecting like uh, not so much Patron and uh, more Hunters and Zoo, I was actually running one Violet, one Shredder. But right now, I think it's better to run double Shredder. Okay. Lothar, do you like uh, Violet Teacher or do you prefer Shredder or maybe Senjin? You know, from my personal experience, I just hate Violet Teacher because it doesn't work with oil so <laughs> often. So <laughs> uh, I, I really like to see it rotating out of the oil rogue because it, 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 it just comes to a situation when there's a, like a 53% of winning the game, it just feels so dirty, you know? Yeah. So. I can totally get behind that. He uses one of the hexes to, to get rid of the pilot shredder. Um, excellent attack before the frog lands. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, uh, Hoka has some trouble because he does not have like uh, a lot of bodies to populate the board and start trading. No, definitely. But no Blade Flurry is uh, a big problem for Kaldi. Well, what we can do here is just pop the, pop the Flamethrower Totem, that's it. Because that kind of the Flamethrower Totem is one of the biggest um, opponents for the Rogue. They can just um, 
push push the rogue um, to, ma to make a threat with anything on the board. Like even a single Searing Totem is a free one minion, which is kind of annoying for the rogue. So killing the Flame Totem is one of the first targets you actually want to target. And right now I wouldn't blame if he hacks the teacher out rightly and he does it. I mean, you won't see a lot of uh, targets. And even if he runs Dr. Boom, you have the BGH. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so he's safe and uh, he's getting board presence now. Oh, and here's that. the boom. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so both players did top deck, kind of. Uh, what do you do, though? Like, this is turn six and you can uh, weapon up. Talnos for the draw. I think you just played Talnos and... Um, Maybe sap, or just, or just kill it. Just kill it with the deadly poison. Mm. But that's your second deadly poison. Yeah. Uh. I think I would rather keep the uh, one one on the board. You know. Yeah, I, I like I like the sub here because you can kill for free the O two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, like I think sub. keeping uh, keeping the board clear against the shaman is more important. And you can also play Thalnos, and you need to cycle at this point, yes. so you can have turn eight plays. Mm -hmm. You can also push your opponent to be overloaded for turn 7. Because if he uses like a lightning storm for that. Uh -huh. But he opts to keep the sub instead. That's interesting because um, turn 7 for you with Dr. Boom, so you don't plan to actually kill the Nerubian till that point. Mm -hmm. Playing Sylvanas on this board will be ab able to counter Dr. Boom. But do you read that much? Do you read that far? Mm. Hmm. You might also go for Totem, Totem. Totem Totem? Hmm. I think Sylvanas would be strictly better. Totem Totem is nice. Uh, actually, yeah, Totem Totem. If, if you hit a Tone Totem, your opponent cannot clear and play Boom in the same time. So that's perfect. But uh, right now he can't play Lothab, obviously. So we will most likely see Dr. Boom. I think so. Without the other one, the minions uh, on the board. It's not really that easy to deal um, um, Is he going for a kill on the Sylvanas? Kill on Sylvanas will, will, secure, will secure the Dr. Boom next turn. So if he, if he uses like weapon up, the the poison. Uh, but oh. I don't like this play because uh, you waste both of your uh, poisons and now your opponent will get a free trade on Argus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't... You don't know that there's Argus for sure, but... Yeah, but dealing one damage from, from the Shaman is really easy with like an Elf Shock or... But you play Lothab, so if, if you play Elf Shock, you just waste your whole turn and you just play Boom on an empty board. Is, is that so bad? Is yeah, that because like in the next turn you have Dr. Boom, so... Yeah, but Hawkeye, even, he knows that even though there will be a Dr. Boom, you have the big game hunter, so you don't have to really Yeah, 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 but I mean it. like... If Kaldi, uh, if Hawkeye plays an Earth Shock, Kaldi is really happy about that because yeah. he mm. doesn't know your opponent has a BGH. He has wasted both hexes. So if you play Doctor Boom in an empty board, you believe you won the game at this point. Yeah, that's a good point. But right now Argus uh, is really important. Argus is amazing. Just trade with the five five. Have the totem, draw your cards, and if if there is Doctor Boom, and I don't see why not. And he will be able to draw two cards. And right now, it's not that obvious that you trade. Well, if you deal for 12 to 12, right, then your um, your single Alakir is 6, so the half of the remaining HP points. I would go face here, and Hawkeye goes face as well. really like that. Well, you will get this one card from the totem anyway, so y your hand will be um, better. <laughs> and Flare is too late here. Yeah, kind of. Poor Kaldi. Yeah, you can still lucky. play sap. Kind of well, kind of nice first to see what do you draw. Yeah, you have to. I mean, like if you play boom, you're dead. Yep. And because you saw the five to face, you might assume you are dead. Yeah, but like shaman is one of the classes that has burst from the hand. And it's three points of damage. Three points of damage is so easy to deal. Yeah. With. Any any spell of the shaman is, is three or more. Oh, he goes for him. Uh, he yeah. might have not have a choice here. It's like a play to win. Yeah, so yeah true. Uh, that's but he had to trade, so Hawkeye will get one more card. Uh, okay, so that's lethal in the next turn. Yeah, you just um, yeah. So play whatever this turn. Maybe, maybe prepare for a taunt. Nah, that doesn't really matter. You just play, play big him hunter to kill the seven seven. I would even go face here. Oh, yeah, just. And then a Haunted Creeper as well. Yeah. 
And you're good, so Hawkeye seems like he's winning uh, game number two as well. He needs a heal bot or bust. But even if he gets a heal bot here, there is Alakir with Rock Biter doing 12 points of damage. Yeah. So do you think you play with the bomb first to maybe pop the Hunted Creeper to <laughs> play in front of <laughs> knives? <laughs> I don't think you can do much uh, if you don't know what your opponent has, if you don't see the Alakir Rock Biter. Ops to farm instead. No, oh, that's sad. I don't think you care about those spiders that much. You just want to draw into. Like even if you get uh, oil, you are still not going to flurry. So now maybe with double, SA seven, he thinks like, hey, I have a chance. I just killed that board. That was also interesting because um, the hundred people was played. After the bombs were spawned, so the f the, uh, the bomb response was first before the spawn of the new sp uh, Spectre Spiders. Yeah, the Defrile thing. All right, we are going to see Alakir finish from Hawkeye. 12 points of damage to the face. And uh, that's a 2-0 lead versus Kaldi. Kaldi not doing that great here. And he's left, I mean, Hawkeye is left with Warlock, which is a handlock? Uh, it's a Mali lock. Oh, Mali wow. Lock. My it's favorite deck. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, right now we see Kaldi playing uh, Rogue, Hunter, and uh, probably handlock. handlock. Yeah, I've seen him play Handlock. So uh, this means Hawkeye has a pretty good chance to win the series because Handlock versus Malilock. Malilock is in a huge advantage. Yeah, I thought he's be best bet to win this matchup. Yeah, because, because it has like two big game hunters, right? I guess so. Yeah, yeah but even if you don't have the big game hunters, it's basically like you do the same stuff, but then you have the combo to deal mm -hmm. 16 points of damage. If you draw the Emperor on curve, you pretty much win this matchup. Like, yeah. And, uh, yep. So There's how do you play else. this against the Rogue? I believe you do need your Twilight Drakes uh, early to be able to put them mm -hmm. in. Uh, you want a coin. Unfortunately for Hawkeye, he didn't get it. Fortunately for Kaldi, he has the coin as a Rogue, which is great. Yeah, that's excellent, yeah. And, uh, yeah, three drops are fine too, I guess. So in you gun can boss? Just in gun boss. Or the 3-5 if you run it instead. Is, is he playing Technician? I have no idea. I have no idea. So he's uh, mulliganing for Twilight Drakes. At this point, you don't need those cards yet. He probably should play the Technician, right? Because um, you you play with the with Corruptor, which has the same synergy as Technician. So why would you deny yourself to have a Technician? The, the thing is, like, Imp Gang Boss is much better than Technician in most scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, same stats can uh, deal much much more damage. And Technician is dependent on uh, the Dragon earlier than Corruptor. Corruptor, mm -hmm. you play by turn 5, maybe for the coins. So yeah, we have more chances point. to get the Dragon. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not sold on either of these, so I'm just testing one and one right now to see which card's the best. Different situations, probably. Yeah, I can stagger if you want the Imgang boss to trade. Oh, look, there's already one soul fire for the Emperor. So this is really important when you draw... If you even don't draw now the Malagos and the second soul fire, you will still have a potential combo with two soul fires on turn 9. On turn 10, sorry. And right now, Kaldi has the possibility of swarming the board with like uh, a crazy play, like coin violet into prep uh, uh, this rate. And judging by uh, Hawkeye's hand, this is by far the best play, but yeah. he does not know it. It's Ka maybe Kaldi is not aware it's um, Maligos. Yeah, 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 that's true. Maligos and deck that was so crucial. Yeah, that, that was that so is crucial. Really important. On the other hand, if he knows that it's Maligos, and he should probably know by. At now, this point, yeah, I yeah. feel like Farseer and uh, Then you can assume the only AoE effect would be Shadow Flame. There is uh, one Hellfire, one Shadow Flame. But to be honest, uh, like 90 or 95 percent of handlocks do not run Farseer. So when you see that card, you start realizing it's a Mali lock. Yeah, yeah, he knows by, uh, by now, I think. Yep. So now he should go with spawning the maximum amount of minions from the, ancient, uh, from the teacher, right? Uh. Not necessarily. If you think there is a, a Hellfire... The Hellfire doesn't do much, because you clear... You you just leave two... Oh no, you leave two Imps. Mm. You Unless you use Blade Flurry. But do you want to use Blade Flurry here? Not really. Not really. But if you manage to get Hellfired by your opponent on five, you play Lothab on an empty board, and this is pretty good. Yeah, that's true. It, it also contents Emperor. It's really difficult because while Rogue playing versus this kind of deck, the combo deck, I, I, I would love to have Preparation Sprint. To have more cards, more options, and uh, kill him before he gets the combo. Mm -hmm. 
I think like Kaldi had a very good chance of winning this game if he played the combo last turn. But right now he's in a tough spot. I don't think so, like he has preparation and sprint. He can draw into stuff. Yeah, obviously, but I think like this Emperor on 6 will just lower Hawkeye's hand. And also there are no dragons! So those Corruptors not doing much, they're yeah. like uh, tall striders. Because I didn't like the, um, leaving the teacher just to be killed from the board. You just know the outcome of the next turn because, <laughs> you know, there's lethal for the valid teacher. That's a snap Lothab, I guess. Yeah, you should be fine with the Lothab. There's nothing else uh, you want to force here. Unless you... Uh, nah. I was thinking Shredder, maybe kind of viscerate yeah. at the weapon attack, but... That's not too good because like uh, the Shredder has to trade into the 1-2, which is really clunky. Yeah, wow, this is a Look huge draw. Look at that, Malikos. Wow. Just wow. in time, just in time. And he has uh, three combo pieces in hand. So this is exactly what he needed. That's 17 points of damage on turn 10. Actually, turn 9. Even. Turn 9, yeah. Turn nine, yeah. That you have a free Soulfire, so the old-style Soulfire. That card was so broken. That's why I love this deck. It's like it brings the old good feel of yeah, a Soulfire, yeah. Soulfire. Blizzard is doing such a good job at uh, some things. Like sh I, I I'm a big fan of Shredders. Uh, well, Emperor creates some fun scenarios as well. It's not that healthy for the game, but it's very fun to play. Imagine right. Soulfire being for zero now. It would have been played in every single Warlock. Yeah. Yep. In every single war. It's just such. It was such a good and amazing card. Yeah, like in Handlock, uh, you play turn four Twilight Rake into a, uh, and you just Soulfire and Azure into was GG against Miracle. Yeah. yeah. True. So now you basically stall and uh, play m play big minions to get to that damage point when mm -hmm. you win with the combo. Uh, Corruptor is amazing. Five four that that deals damage. Yeah. And uh, Hokai is in a great position to just uh, seal the game on turn 9. But now you can just prep sprint in Vivis, which is fine. Yeah, the Corruptor is really weak to evisceration, but on the other hand, still it's a uh, 1 for 1, because it killed the creature, well, actually just mm -hmm. killed 1 for 2. 1 for 2, yeah. yeah. Well, it didn't kill it on Bayon, right? Because it, it, w it had to be damaged before, but still it's not like that big of a deal. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, uh, like, dictate what 2 for 1 is in Hearthstone. It's kind of different than other card games. Oh, that implosion with the Silence might work here. But even Silence Corruptor, I think, is better. Especially after seeing one of this way. I think it will go for that. Silence Corruptor. I agree. Well, we need to deal 5 damage next turn to win the game, right? Yeah. So it if the Corruptor 17. will deal damage to the face, and it actually might, then he wins the game. Yeah, so I say 7 in these 2 points of damage. Maybe you uh, follow us. Fun of Knives is a 7. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great play. The fun part is that if Hawkeye picks another Soulfire, he might wait until turn 10 and then risk it. And that's how much damage? Uh, 15 plus 11? That's it's lethal. That's 26, right? It's 8 plus 3, 11 plus, yeah, it's 26. Yeah. That's an OTK. <laughs> he has 26. No, 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 the, he has 22. Oh, 22 actually, yeah. I mean, if you draw the second Soulfire, you absolutely go for that. The chance of losing is so small, especially in this matchup. It's not like an easy matchup. Hi, Vimps! Look at that! Wow. That's cheating! That's cheating, man. Why is Hawkeye so good? Tell us. I don't know. It's it should have been maximum four. I don't know. That guy cheats. <laughs> <laughs> well, he makes egg, egg Shaman work. I mean, like, come on. He <laughs> obviously cheats. So ho what can Kaldi do? Um, he knows that there is a combo, he knows that there was Torison, so it's very dangerous. It's like sitting on a powder keg. Hokai can just explode at any moment. Yeah, the point is that the Far Seed does not achieve anything at this point, I think. I mean, you're either dead with double Soulfire or you just leave. So you can just play a Boom into Flurry into... Uh, yeah, that play. By the way, this is the third deadly poison played on a weapon with only one durability. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think there should be a stat for that. Yeah. <laughs> like blowback, but something else. <laughs> Dagger back. Dagger back. Dagger back. <laughs> well, Hellfire deals with the problem, and um, then you play just Big Game Hunter, and, and you follow it up with your with your imp gang boss, and that's basically it. No, that's a very strong turn, yeah. If you help her, you're so close to lethal. I mean, the rogue is close to dying, because like, uh, Kaldi's hand is 
uh, has no damage at all. And you know that because yeah. he has played everything. Exactly. There was like one Eviscerate, <laughs> uh, two Blade Flurries, right? Yep. We have Twitch uh, right here with us. Uh, right now, you can <laughs> you you have to Hellfire into Imgang Boss into BGH. I think like he's considering doing that, like Hellfire in after the Imgang Boss to preserve his total. Uh, I don't really agree with that, but uh, plays Imgang Boss. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to to preserve his life total. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's and only to, to get the bombs. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work for him, but I can totally understand there. Well, twelve is is dangerous. That was th I think that was the better play because right now. Uh, he could be dead, like at on 12. Yeah, and he has him in range anyway. Mm -hmm. He just yeah, needs yeah. to deal two more damage. Mm -hmm. So with backstab and... Wow, he can still... Kaldi can still elude Hawkeye here with That's the backstab and final knives. That's why I didn't like damaging his own, uh, own M-Gun boss, because it's in range of everything. Yeah. I mean, he played way too safe, but... If if he had like all the burst in his hand, uh, we would just say he did the right play. So, and he even backed up a lot of respect here by Kaldi. I like it. That's because double soul fire yep. is 18, mm -hmm. and that would be 19 with that imp. And the kill boot. Now that's one of the most crucial draws. After the second soul fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a top, definitely a hill boot here, and maybe a BGH too. He needs more pressure. If he gets a twilight drake. He won't be able to play it. So, what is the card he wants to tap into? Uh, well, Soulfire for next turn. Soulfire, yeah. But BGH is a very good body at this point. You have seen like pretty much everything from Kaldi. Uh, oh, wow! <gasps> wow! Really? R I, I what? Have no oh, idea what's happening. Why? Okay, I guess I guess the rock cannot heal it. But I don't like wasting the dark bomb here. Yeah, because now a single sap, and he didn't see saps this game. Also, right? That's because he was afraid if he plays the heal bot, Rogue will be able to deal how much damage with double po uh, with double oil. Well, um, it was a problem with if you play deadly poison to double oil. Actually, you're at uh, nine damage. Uh, you have a weapon of nine damage. But he saw two blade flurries. Yeah, so yeah, no, I know. I'm just yeah. saying double oil is nine damage. Yeah, plus deadly. But right now he has two weapon charges, so he cannot use deadly poison. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. But he did it. Well, uh, we'll have to. Yeah, we have some technical issues right now. We we'll can't wait. Stream, but in a moment, oh yeah, okay, we see what's happening now. Well, uh, I heard the oil happen. Yes, <laughs> and then the poison as well. I've seen a deadly poison and the oil being cast. So Malagos is back to hand. That's a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat play. And right now, Kaldi uh, has to find good answers for this board. There's no Blade Flurry. Or is, is there one? Are you certain of two being played? I of think so, right? Of Flurries? Yeah. I've seen one. I remember one, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah, probably it was a, a buffed Flurry. A buffed Fan of Knives. For yeah, two oh, days. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that was a buffed Fan of Knives. That's true, that's true. Yeah, because I don't remember the first one. So th there was two Fan of Knives. Because one was already played uh, on turn... Uh, Three, I think, when there was an in-gang boss on, on board. I'm not really sure about it. Uh, on turn three, I th maybe he. It was it was a turn we were like considering valid teacher plus prep coin. Ah, too many games today. Uh, yeah, too many. Games. So there's nine points of damage on board, and uh, Maligos is plus eight. Seventeen points of damage. So I think Kald is in a commanding lead right now after the very safe play by Hawkeye. That's true. Nobody corrected me on my math. I was checking you guys. No, <laughs> we didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, you know, he, he can follow up with the Edwin Van Cleef, but uh, and he most likely dies. But, oh, what? But right now it's nine plus... No, it's not. He needs he needs the second soul fire, obviously. Well, he has mortal coin But right now <laughs> you obviously play the Maligos again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's mortal coil, the Edwin Van Cleef. I will go crazy if I see another play right here. I don't think he's capable of doing that. Six damage with Mortal Coil. I love the big Mortal nice. Coils with Maligos. You don't need Still Shadow Flame, right? You, you can just Soul Fire here. Second Mortal Coil, not really useful right now. Yeah, I think you do Soul Fire because if by any chance Maligos dies, you want to secure a situation. Wow, and Kaldi Ka is out of cards. One last card in his library. So, we have one Flurry left in the deck. 
Oh, and that's crap. not it, but he, but he actually can just uh, Azure Drake into it. I hope we are not wrong and he has played both flurries. But the way Kaldi has played this match, he expects a flurry in his deck. Well, right. I'm really curious because I'm kind of confused by the draws not for now. Uh, so I'm not sure what. If, kind if that's a flurry, that he, he wins, right? Because he Azure Drake into isn't flurry. Isn't that the Sam? second eviscerate? Mm, no, first I've seen two first eviscerates. One first one was played on Black and Corruptor, right? And it was flurry. Yeah. It was the flurry. Yeah. All the way. So he. F and right now, yeah, he has to just prep it. I mean, he knows his opponent has no uh, has no like uh, spells in hand, which will face damage. So he just goes. Wait, but like, he can top deck Soulfire. He can top deck Soulfire. He can top deck an owl. And he has the tap. He as has well. the mortal coil to kill one of the creatures. Well, that's not it. Well, he has a tap. Plan. He has many draws like to kill it. Okay, right now he will just mortal coil and trade the the belcher. But right I think you tap first. Uh, does it really matter? But at this point, you don't tap and you just win the game. You know your opponent has sap and something else in, in his hand. Uh, you, you, you think it's a 4-drop because like he only played one Shredder. Uh, there is fatigue damage coming as and well. Uh, that's game, right? Yeah, that's, uh, well, you play Valid Teacher. You sap you Polygos. Sap one, of one of the creatures and then the Defender of Argus is left on board which deals 2 damage and you get 2 damage from fatigue. So yeah, that's game. That's game. Wow. All right, so Hawkeye is able to take Kaldi 3-0. And what was the last card that he would, be, he would have drawn? Let's see. After the tap. Let's see the last card. That's the Azure Drake. Well, okay, that doesn't really matter. But yeah, he could draw from it maybe wow. so far. But yeah, uh, maybe. Amazing lineup and amazing match. Wow, uh, really well played. But uh, just one small mistake uh, when we just said he shouldn't play Maligos and just clear with a Dark Bomb, but eventually it worked out for him. Mm -hmm. We discussed before that uh, he saw a game of uh, Malirog against uh, Mali Malilog against Rog going to Fatigue and uh, he just won that game. So uh, you can also win that way because like the Rog has very limited threats in this uh, uh, deck and in this matchup you can just like out uh, run him of threats. Yeah, because there's uh, like two Farseers, two anti kill bots, so it's basically like a warrior. Yeah, 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 it is. All right, guys. Uh, Deathlord, thank you so much for joining us. Thank well, you actually, stay with us because okay. we have uh, one more headset. So, Hawkeye, congratulations. Hello. Thanks. Can you tell us more about yourself? Like, congratulations on the win first, but tell us who you are and uh, how are you doing in this tournament? I'm doing fine. I'm 6 0. <laughs> yeah, I'm very you happy, advanced. of course. Huh? You advanced for, for already. Yeah, I know, I know. For the top eight, and you will be just um, playing the last round for your best seed because if you'll be the first one. After the seven rounds of Swiss, we'll be playing against, in theory, the weakest link of the whole tournament because he will, he will be at the eighth place o after the Swiss. Yeah, I don't think there's a weakest actually. Yeah, I'm in just top you know, eight. teasing, yeah. but <laughs> it's still top eight, right? Yeah. I, I may just give him the game right now. I don't even <laughs> care that I passed in the top eight. And just chill and wait for yeah. tomorrow? All uh, right. Do we know if Tiddler or Kaka won the game? Oh, I don't think so. We don't think. I don't know. They they were playing all right. All right, we will check while we while we talk. So, take us through your lineup, by the way. Why did you bring those decks, and how did you prepare? I actually prepared for handlocks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that Druid uh, beats handlock like nine to ten times. Uh, my summon runs a bit as well. Yeah, we saw that there. Yeah, and then uh, what else I was playing? <laughs> well, you had Shaman, you had Malagos. Uh, Ward, yeah, and right? Malagos runs like double Ola and double BGH, and you can burst him down with two spells. Mm -hmm. So I was basically bringing the lineup uh, to face Handlocks. Okay. But I what apparently faced only one. Yeah. What about patrons? How do you. Um, are your decks prepared against patron, war uh, patron warriors? Versus patrons? Yes. Oh, we just lose. Oh. Okay. We just lose versus patrons. Like my Shaman runs only one storm. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Maybe, uh, yeah, my lamp is not good for a spot. I think we ju I just take a lose if I face a pattern. Yeah, that's also a strategy. Just yeah. yeah, but that's the That's beauty. actually so funny because many players prepared versus patrons and they already uh, lost the tournament. They're out and you prepared to lose versus patrons and you're through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pre happens. Pretty that nice. That's the beauty of the Conquest format. You can just have a lineup which is very weak to one deck, but you don't care. Like in, in uh, deck elimination, this, for, uh, this uh, lineup would be very weak. Because you have three decks which are weak against the most dominant deck of the format. Mm -hmm. But in Conquest, you simply don't care. Because, okay, you can have one win, but I will win the rest of your decks. 
Yeah, that's true. Very good uh, point. By the way, I got information that Tiddler won uh, versus Oskaka. So, wow. so Tiddler is already in. And we can uh, look at the standings right now mm -hmm. uh, and the matches. So let's look at the board and see who is uh, doing how and what are the matches. Uh, at least I got information that we can show it in a moment. <laughs> All right, we're going to show it to you guys oh yeah, in a moment. So there Tinder won against Ostkaka, 3-1. All right, then we have Retard. Re <laughs> we've seen that one. Yeah, we've, we've seen, seen that, that one. one yeah. He still needs to win one more uh, next round. Unit qualified two. Wait, not so fast. I missed some matches. The Fischer won versus Reynolds. No show. It's well, that's th those matches are not... So yeah, some right of now, these yeah. matches are uh, from players who are already out of the tournament. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, some matches are still ongoing, so yeah. uh, <laughs> we are not having the scores yet. But uh, what an amazing tournament. And uh, Hokai, how do you feel like, I think, the first player who qualifies for the top eight? Yeah. With Tiddler, of course. Yeah, I'm happy. I don't know what to say. All I right. had this feeling again in the past in Uber's China. Yeah, it's much less now. In China, yeah. I was too hyped. Yeah. Okay, so are you nervous at all? No, I'm not nervous. That's good. That's a good, um, yeah. Yeah. good sign because tomorrow will be a big day. Uh, top eight of the first DreamHack with Swiss format. But by the way, how um, how do you feel about the Swiss format in comparison to let's say single double elimination or? I think or the it's the most fair mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, the game has RNG. We all know that. But if we play, if you play like a lot of games. It's, it comes to skill sometimes. It's not only RNG. That's why I like the Swiss format more than like single elimination. Would okay. you like to see more rounds than seven? Like let's play, uh, let's say nine rounds. I think for 128 players, seven is fine. Seven or eight, something yeah, like that. Because then you always have one undefeated player. Yeah, after that's seven why. Rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can you tell us more about your team? Because uh, you're on Razor's Edge. Razor's Edge Gaming, yeah. Okay. Uh, we are a team from Greece. But we have some foreign players. Yeah, we are. Well, I would say like, we play Hearthstone. We like the game. And that's all. So <laughs> I yeah. heard from Deathlord that you're, you're pretty good at uh, Yu-Gi-Oh as well as a team. No. Yeah, you have a very no. Your uh, team, the Razor Shed game. Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah, squad. yeah. yeah. Team. I not that you're uh, yeah. yeah, we have <laughs> also a team in Yu-Gi-Oh. They are pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And you also had a very big. Uh, tur you have tournaments going on like. Uh, yeah, you I have a very big land tournament. Now they have. They also run like uh, weekly qualifiers, open to everyone, uh, which award BlizzCon points. All right. And you can also qualify to a LAN event, which is going to be hosted like in one or two, like in August. Yeah, that's nice. Sounds like a pretty awesome team, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, any final shoutouts? Shout out to my team, I guess. Razor Edge Gaming. All right, oh. that's a good shoutout. Uh, <laughs> Lord, any shoutouts from you? Uh, Okay, uh, just to everyone who supports Shout me. Shout out to Deathlord. I, I'm, well. just, I'm just <laughs> cheering up for Hawkeye. I'm so happy he won, and we'll see him in the top eight, so that's like a big win for All us. right, guys. Thank you so much oh. for joining us, and congratulations on winning Hawkeye and qualifying. Uh, I think right now we are going for a short break, and then we'll have Amaz versus Yogg. That's an elimination match, so if Amaz loses, he's out of the tournament. If he wins, he will stay. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.